Today I'm going to share with you guys about cold showers. I can't be the only one who keeps hearing about how amazing cold showers are for you. It raises your dopamine level 250%. Cold therapy mm. is very popular. But surely it can't be as life altering as everyone says it is, right? And it is all scientifically endorsed. But there's no conclusive peer reviewed data that says it does anything amazing for you. Okay, I need to figure this out. Are cold showers as good as everyone says? And why is the science so all over the place? I mean, I keep hearing how amazing it is, but she just told me that- There's no conclusive peer review data. Okay, I need to figure this out. Okay, wait, but what's the point of cold showers? Why should I have to subject myself to an uncomfortable shower experience when a warm shower is currently the highlight of my morning? It turns out that exposing yourself to cold water can have some surprising benefits for your health, mood, and performance. But how does it work? To be totally clear, I have done zero research. I'm literally just gonna put the shower on cold and I'm gonna step in and see what happens. According to a study by the Thrombosis Research Institute in London, cold showers can boost your immune system. In fact, they found that people who took cold showers every day for a month had higher levels of white blood cells than those who took warm showers. The researchers came to the conclusion that the cold water stimulates the body just enough to produce more of these cells as a way of adapting to the stress of cold water. This extra stimulation and minor stress effect on the body actually has a scientific name, hormesis. Hormesis is like your body's way of saying what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. The same principle applies to cold showers. When you expose yourself to cold water, you activate a stress response in your body, your blood vessels constrict, your heart rate increases, your breathing becomes faster and deeper, and your metabolism ramps up. These are all signs that your body is trying to cope with the cold and maintain its core temperature. I think I need to do some research into how this actually works because that wasn't right. That was so much harder than I thought it was going to be. I knew it was going to suck, but what I wasn't expecting was for the was that the second that my head went under the water, that my body would immediately go into a shock response. I, I completely lost control of my breathing, and I like my whole body just went into like survival, the help mode. There is some evidence that cold showers can have direct health benefits, but it really hasn't been researched enough to have a definitive answer. But in a randomized controlled trial with 3,018 participants, they found that taking a hot to cold shower, which is where you start with hot water and then work your way down to cold for 30, 60 or 90 seconds every day for 30 days resulted in a 29% reduction in sickness absences from work compared to a control group. Okay, I just did what I definitely should have done before trying my first cold shower, but I did some research and I found a method that is supposed to make it actually bearable and is supposed to be better for you. It's called the SAD method. It stands for start, adapt, develop. Basically, it just means start with a warm shower, your regular shower, do the normal things, wash your body, hair, brush your teeth, whatever. And then you you start the cold shower at the end of your shower. So you do your normal shower and then you, you flip it over to the colder setting, you brace yourself for the shock. And then as you do that more and more, your body starts adapting and you can start going from like 30 seconds to 60 seconds to 90 seconds and then your body develops all of the science stuff that we talked about earlier. All right, cool. Well, I guess now that I know all the science, there's only really one thing left to do. I'm gonna take a cold shower every day for the next week and see if it's all it's cracked up to be. Day three, I just did my cold shower, or just I did it this morning. Um, uh, the, the SAD, the SAD method has been working really well. I've been starting with a warm shower and then scaling down into a cold shower and going as low as I can and trying to maintain that. And I feel like it's giving me like the boost of, of clarity and creativity that I need. It's a challenging thing that I have to do the first thing that I do on my day and it feels like it makes the rest of my day significantly easier uh, as a result of that. Cold water activates the sympathetic nervous system, which is responsible for the fight or flight response. This triggers the release of endorphins, which are natural painkillers and mood boosters. Cold water also stimulates the vagus nerve, which connects the brain to various organs and regulates mood, anxiety, and depression. I just finished my first run while doing this cold showers challenge, so I'm about to try my first recovery cold shower. This could 110% just be placebo, but it feels like my calves hurt significantly less than they did before the cold shower. In a study by the Virginia Commonwealth University School of Medicine, they found that cold showers can help treat depression by increasing the levels of noradrenaline, a neurotransmitter that improves alertness and motivation. 
Noradrenaline is involved in regulating mood, attention, and stress responses. The study suggested that exposure to cold water activates the sympathetic nerve system, which stimulates the production and release of noradrenaline in the brain. The study concluded that adapted cold showers performed once or twice daily might be a simple, effective, and inexpensive treatment for depression. Okay, again, this could 1000% be a placebo, but I feel like I have more energy during the day. I feel like happier, I feel more focused and energized, and I don't know if that's that could be due to a million different factors, but the only thing that I've changed in my routine is the cold showers. So, I don't know what that means, and I don't know why that works, but I feel like I just have more dopamine and, and endorphins running through my body over the course of the day. I just took my last cold shower for this week and I think ultimately it, it has been a really cool experience. I've definitely felt better physically, mostly mentally. I feel like it sparked a lot more better mental choices for me this week in that I get the hardest part of my day out of the way first and then it makes every other choice afterwards feel way easier. So it's way easier to go out for a run and work out and eat healthier because those decisions on the whole feel significantly easier. Physically though, I don't really feel like, I don't know if you'd be able to feel a high white blood cell count, but I don't feel like I've had any changes on a purely physical human body level. I'm sure you're thinking, wow, Frank, with all that science and incredible information, I'm 100% convinced and I'm gonna go do cold showers now and completely change my life and- Stop. I've been lying to you. Or more accurately, I've been presenting things as facts when that's not entirely true. Do you remember at the start of this movie how I mentioned this? I keep hearing how amazing it is, but she just told me that There's no conclusive peer review data Well, I've been doing exactly what everyone else has on the internet Touting science and studies and using these big words to make it sound like this is all absolutely true science But the truth is, it's not Look at this as it turns out, most of the studies that have tested their thoughts on cold showers have used very small sample sizes, ranging from 8 to 24 participants. Now that's obviously not enough to draw any generalizable conclusions. Not only that, but they can't even seem to agree on what the definition of a cold shower even is. Some used water temperatures as low as 4 degrees Celsius, while others used temperatures as high as 20. Some exposed participants to cold water for only a few seconds, while others did it for a few minutes. Some used continuous cold water, while others altered between cold and hot. These variations make it hard to compare the results and determine the optimal conditions for achieving the desired effects. And do you remember how we talked about increasing white blood cell counts? Well, that sounds super cool and important, but this claim is also based on weak evidence. Most of the studies that have found an increase in white blood cells after cold showers were conducted on athletes or people who regularly practice cold exposure outside of cold showers. Now, these people had most likely already developed an adaptation to cold stress that enhances their immune response. So it's not clear if the same effect would apply to people who are not used to cold showers or who have weaker immune systems. And on top of that, some studies found no significant difference in white blood cell count between people who take cold showers and those who don't. And even if there is a difference, it might not even translate into any meaningful health outcomes. In that one study that I mentioned that found that people who took cold showers for 30 days had fewer self-reported sick days, that could be due to a million other lifestyle factors factors, such as placebo effects, reporting bias, or even just general lifestyle changes. Even the mental health claims that I made are janky. Most of the studies that have investigated this effect have relied on subjective measures of mood and well-being, like questionnaires or scales. These measures can be influenced by personal expectations, social desirability, or mood fluctuations. And going even deeper, these studies didn't control other factors that can affect mood and mental health, like sleep quality, diet, exercise, social support, or even medication. Additionally, some studies found no significant difference in mood or well-being between people who take cold showers and those who don't. Now, that doesn't mean that cold showers are useless or harmful. They might still have some positive effects for some people. I mean, I definitely feel like I benefited from them. But the science on cold showers just isn't very reliable. And just because you heard someone on a podcast or a YouTube video or online talking about how it changed their life doesn't mean that it'll change yours. More than likely, the cold showers initiated a snowball effect that inadvertently caused a bunch of other lifestyle changes and improved their overall quality of life that way. So, should you try taking cold showers? Well, 
that's up to you. I've laid out all the information that I have, both the scientific and the non-scientific, and for me, it was something that I feel like is beneficial to my routine. I think I will end up implementing it as a recovery system for my running training, but as a general lifestyle change, I'm not gonna do cold showers every day. I, I enjoy my warm showers far too much for that to even remotely think about it. But should you try it? Well, no, I'm not here to live your life. I'm just here to give you all the facts and my experience and hopefully inform your decision in some way. Let me know if you have any ideas for things that I could cover in the future. And don't forget that I have a Patreon. It's at the top of the description. I make all of these things completely alone by myself and supporting me as an independent artist means the absolute world to me. And you'll get your name right here at the end of every movie, which I think is pretty darn cool. All right, that's it. And I'll see you next week.